Today I'm not in Delft because I have an appointment with Jeff Sutherland. Jeff is the inventor of Scrum. And as we see Scrum move beyond software engineering only, I'd like to discuss that with him. Jeff, uh, thanks for uh, having this, this talk today. Um, well, uh, Scrum is under much development. Things are picking up in the world largely. Um, and today I would like to talk to you about um, Scrum Beyond Development and what your experiences are, what you see in the field, that people and organizations adopting Scrum, what do they do, let's say, in other departments than just software development? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> a few years ago I started working with a venture capital group and they immediately saw that Scrum made things go twice as fast for anything. And they implemented Scrum throughout the venture capital group for the investors, for the search team, for all the teams supporting our investments. That caused some of our companies to look at Scrum not only in, in the development area but outside. So we have a number of companies now that have, that have senior management Scrum. So the CEO is meeting every day with his team and every department has their own Scrum team. So the whole company is doing Scrum. Okay. Uh, some of this gets, sometimes this gets generated by they introduce Scrum in development and all of a sudden that starts working well for the first time. And then the CEO says, well, engineering is now working. They were the broken before, but now everything else is slowing things down. So we need to fix that. Why don't we do Scrum everywhere? Okay. And, and how, how well is Scrum uh, uh, suitable to, for example, sales or to marketing? Uh, the challenge is to get the sales team to do it. If they do it, uh, they can make the sales team uh, process much more predictable. That gives them the ability to adjust in real time, which will drive revenue up and give them a competitive advantage. So the opportunity is there. Can you get the sales guys to actually do it? That's the, that's the challenge. It works. It's harder to implement in marketing because they tend to be a little fuzzier in their thinking. Okay. <laughs> so, but if management would succeed in giving uh, marketing clearer goals, Yes. Then Scrum could also be yes. much beneficial over there. Definitely, definitely. One of, one of our uh, companies that we're invested in, uh, they have seven or eight uh, engineering Scrum teams, but the best Scrum team is in the marketing group in that company. So it can be really done well in marketing. Okay. And one of the things, what you often see is then they start doing Scrum in sales, Scrum in marketing, but still they're doing Scrum in the silos. Yeah. So marketing is getting better, and in the, at other teams sales is getting better. But in the end, you know, the, the money is in the flow through the company. Exactly. Have you seen experience over there that you see teams consisting of all those disciplines, so really cross-discipline teams? As soon as you start a scrum with, in the CEO's office, the CEO almost always immediately says, I've got all these departments that are they're coming in, they're talking about what they're doing, but nobody's helping one another about yeah. it. And it doesn't feel like a team to me. So the first thing Scrum surfaces is that the senior management team isn't really a team. They're not really helping one another out. But that's a major so, impediment. Yeah. So then you, I coach the, the CEO, you need to have your quarterly objectives on that Scrum board, and they need to be talking about how every department's helping you meet those objectives. Okay. And that's the discussion. It changes the whole dynamic. And, and, and who sets uh, the goals for the company? Okay, the chief product owner. <laughs> so who is the he? chief product owner for the company is usually the CEO. Okay. And uh, the model of the CEO our investors really like. They feel if the CEO is not the chief product owner, they can't get good product. And they like the Apple model. Steve Jobs is the chief product owner of Apple. And, and he's got all the money. So but, but couldn't Scrum be a way of enforcing that and rolling that into a company? Because if you start with Scrum, you start getting focus on priority and delivering value, and then it rolls through, and in the end, you, you end up with the CEO. Right. Um, in order to have a CEO be a good chief product owner, though, they have to have a really good product concept and vision. And some people are a lot better than others with that. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. So, on the other hand, any company with a CEO with a lack of vision has a problem anyway. Yeah, that's true. So better but, to find it out as soon as possible. But if you read the, you know, a lot of the recent marketing literature, it's all about the business schools graduating these tactical managers that manage by the numbers and have no knowledge of the product. And that has really done a lot of damage in U.S. industry. 
in a recent post on Forbes, uh, Steve Denning, he proposed that, let's say, if there would be a Nobel Prize on management, he would say it's deserved by, uh, by, by Jeff and all the other people in the agile field. Um, in, in which extent, to which extent do you know, let's say, his book, Radical Management, and the way he, let's say, uses and reuses Scrum to bring it also to the corporate level? Well, Steve is an interesting guy. He came actually to my Scrum training. Uh, he was, uh, he really got Scrum at a deep level. And he told me coming out of that class, he was going to write a book on it. That book is Radical Management. The interesting thing about the book is he, he doesn't say Scrum other than maybe one or two times in a later chapter. It's all about what a managers need to do to, to come into the 21st century. So I think, I think it's brilliant, of course. It's flattering to have him say we ought to get a Nobel Prize, but irrespective of that, there is no Nobel Prize for management. Um, Scrum is changing the world. That, that's happening. That's why he's saying that. So I feel really good about that. Uh, and one of the primary goals of my company right now is to move Scrum into the management because to take it the next step, there's a lot of good engineers out there now that know how to do Scrum, but to take it the next step, the management has to change and move into the 21st century type of management that Denning is talking about. So, concluding, the 21st century will be the century of Scrum? Uh, it's looking that way. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. I will give it a thought, start writing and make a column on, uh, on this topic. Thank very you very good. much. Thank you. Soon after we've introduced Scrum into software development teams, we get the question to also look to the other teams in the organization, like sales, marketing, or even the management team itself. So Scrum is moving beyond software development, also expressed in the book by Steve Denning on radical management, where he uses the Scrum principles for the general management field, where he promotes the use of value prioritization, making sure you deliver value as soon as possible, or where you establish flow through an organization so that the ID and the time from concept to cash is as short as possible. And where continuous improvement is the heartbeat of an organization by putting self-steering into the teams. So this will really change the world we do business and the way we organize ourselves. So when people ask me, yeah, should we look at Scrum? Should we look at radical management? I can clearly say, well, you're not obliged to look at it, but it's survival of the fittest, and survival is not obliged. Deze videoblog werd mede mogelijk gemaakt door iSense Pro Awareness. En uh, Frans, uh, have you taped it? Yeah, it's a wrap. And what do you think about it? Well, the survival thing uh, reminded me of the weekend. Uh, really, I'm still recovering. Uh, why? Well, I went home, uh, rushed home for my wife. She had a big surprise. Oh, but why recover from a big surprise? Yeah, it was shopping with her and her mother. 